All right, we're ready to pick things up again. Uh, we started the process of creating the proof tree, and we began with our main proof tree where we had our pre and post conditions that we defined earlier and the program in the middle. And we refined this a little bit to change the, the post condition using the rules of consequence. And it's now this tree TGCD that we want to create that gets plugged in above here. And so we took the step of splitting the program into two pieces using the rule of composition. And we were about to go off and see what this tree for the while loop would be. And we're going to make a, a few, one more step at this point before we take that step. So let's go back up and look at some of our abbreviations. And we want to realize that post2 is what we have here, right, is the same thing as our loop invariant and the negation of the while loop condition. Right? And so this is good news, right? We should look at those things and then consider the rule of iteration over here and think, all right, so the post condition we get after the while loop is the loop invariant and the negation of the condition. Right? So now we're, we've made some, some progress and we can realize that we can start to think about reasoning about the body of the while loop. So knowing that this is the case, Oops. that post2 is the same thing as the conjunction of those two, two pieces, we can go back down to our while loop and make some uh, extensions here. Right? So what is it that we might like to do above the bar here? Right? So we want to use our rule of uh, consequence first to understand what's going to happen with the while loop, right? So if we think what we're going to have here, we're going to have our loop invariant, the while loop. We know that after the while loop finishes, the loop invariant holds, and the negation of the condition holds, right? So not condition. Right? So that's what we're going to get once we think about applying the rule of iteration. So that's the place where we're going to apply the rule of iteration. This is the tree t while. We're going to go create in a little bit. And so what we want to do here is realize a place where we can make an application of the rule of consequence. Right? And that's that now we want to weaken the post condition. Right? Weakening here is uh, not really what we're doing. These things are semantically equivalent. Uh, but the, the important point is that this loop invariant and the negation of the condition implies loop invariant and neg condition. So the reason we're using the rule of consequence here is that the negation of our condition was not just semantically or syntactically the same as not of the condition, right? So let's go up here again and look at neg condition, right? We had applied to Morgan's laws so that we had a conjunction of two expressions where in the condition we have a disjunction, the use of an or. And so to massage this, to do the little bit of sort of simple reasoning we need to do about these expressions, we, we make another application of the rule of consequence. All right. So we're now ready to think about creating one of these trees. So let's go and see what the while loop tree is that we want to create. All right, so what's the tree we're going to plug in to the piece above there? All right, so let's go up and grab the pieces, copy this down again. All right, and so at this point, what we want to, to do is apply the rule of iteration. Right? So what does that tell us? It tells us we need to say something about the loop invariant and the condition. 
the body of the while loop. And so the body of our while loop is just i is equal to i minus 1. And afterwards, uh, we need to make sure the loop invariant still holds after we take a step through the while loop. So the question then is, how do we verify this? All right, so this is our next task. And so here, we can think about using the rule of consequence and an application of the axiom of assignment. So let's consider the axiom of assignment first. <coughs> All right, so we have this piece. And we ask ourselves, what is the precondition that is going to be generated by replacing i in the loop invariant with the uh, expression in that assignment. So let's go back up and recall what our loop invariant is. Right, and we were a little little lax in our uh, expressions here, right? So if we replace this uh, English language bit right, what is it when we say J is not a common divisor of M and N. Right, so in this case what we want to use is the bit up here. Alright, so our loop invariant is not a common divisor. So this is the part we're going to grab. Take a break here and pick this up in just a bit.